Hello, this is Eric Fabro with another Archicad video tip. Today we're going to focus on terrain modeling and how to use solid element operations and complex profiles to simplify, speed up, and improve your construction documentation. This project that we're looking at was designed by Scott Bulmer as part of our master template as a sample file. It's just a simple two-story um, project, and here we see a section. The section is uh, starting to be developed. You can see some framing in there and even the foundation um, stem wall and footing. Uh, but uh, I'll point out that in this area that there's a problem. There's a line going across the stem wall because the um, terrain has not been carved out to um, accommodate it. In addition, we need to create a crawl space underneath the building. So I'll take a cutaway. And in this cutaway, you can see the overlap. Um, now, if I select this element, you'll see that it is actually a single element. It's a wall with a complex profile. So under the design menu, complex profiles, profile manager, I can see the definition for this. It's one of many different profiles that you can create. And uh, here we see the raised floor. I'll edit it and show you that here is one fill that actually is representing concrete and another one it's representing the wood. Now, this element is actually part of a group. So if I turn groups back on, you'll see all of the stem walls were drawn at the same time and uh, grouped together. And I can use them to carve out the, the space into the terrain. So I'll use solid element operations under the design menu and make these elements the operator. And then select the, the uh, terrain slab, in this case, as the target, and subtract. And you can see now the result is much cleaner. And when I go back to that section, you'll see that it's updated. Now we're going to go on and create a crawl space. On the foundation level, on the plan, you can see here is the terrain um, that is created with a slab. Here are the stem walls and footings. And here is a special purpose slab that I've created that actually extends to the inside face of the stem wall. You can see how they go in a little bit further than the gray area. That is on a special layer called Y Special Modeling Elements SEO Invisible 3D. If I open up the layer dialog box, you'll see that this um, layer, which is for elements that are for modeling purposes but are normally invisible, has been put into a special wireframe state. If I click here, you see that's solid, that's wireframe. Now if I do this cutaway again, you'll notice this red element. That's the one we were just looking at. It's the um, modeling element. I'll deselect it so you can see again, it is a wireframe and it goes down to the base of the stem wall where it meets the footing. And I'll make this the operator. Pick the slab for the train as a target and subtract out. And you can see now we've got the crawl space beautifully and simply created. When I cut the section, you'll see that it's very nicely um, indicating that. Now, if I wanted to go and change the um, shape of the stem wall or footing, we can do that and very quickly change the entire system. So I'll go under the Design Menu Complex Profiles back to the Profile Manager, again select the raised floor and edit it. And perhaps I'll just select this and extend this by a few inches in each direction to make it a stronger base. And as soon as I store this, you'll see that that information has happened here as well as over here. And if I go to that cutaway, you'll see that instantly that also updates. So it's a great convenience to use the solid element operations because the relationship is live. And to use the complex profiles allows you to change the definition of the system uh, in a single step to make the updates in all views. Now we're going to take a look at a different project. The Drucker Brownstein Residence by House and House Architects, a San Francisco firm. This is featured in the Archicad step-by-step -step training guide by Tom Simmons. You'll see here a site plan and here is a 3D view of the project. In this section, you'll notice that the terrain is passing through the inside of the building and needs to be carved out where the floor slab or the slab on grade is placed. 
I'm going to go in and select the slab and bring up the solid element operations dialog. Make that slab the operator so it'll control the action. Select the train and make it the target so that it gets modified. And then use a different variation, in this case subtraction with upward extrusion. And you'll see that after I execute that, that the um, the terrain has been carved out where the slab exists and everything above. This makes a nice clean result in each of the sections. Now when I go back to the 3D view, we don't see much difference because that was all inside the building. However, if we do zoom in a little bit, we'll see a similar issue with relationship to the patio. I'll select the patio here, which is partially buried, and make it the operator. Select the terrain and make it the target and do the same ex um, subtraction with upward extrusion and now you can see that these pavers are showing up properly that the train has been carved out for them. Now when I go back to um, uh, look at this in uh, 3D uh, I'm going to add now a path. So I've drawn uh, just using the spline tool a uh, shape here with two splines and I'll go to the slab and have it trace that shape. I've set it up ahead of time to have a top height higher than the um, tallest point so that when I put this in uh, here and we look at it in 3D, you can see that it is floating above the terrain. Now the uh, slab has a uniform thickness and therefore uh, a flat top height and I would like to make it fit into the terrain. So I'm going to select it and make it the target so it's going to be modified. Now the terrain in this case controls the action, so it'll be the operator. And I'll use a different command, which is intersection. What this does is it says that the target should be brought down to only where it, it intersects the operator. So in this case, you can see that there is no longer any part of the slab above grade. However, it does look a little funny because both are coexisting in the same space. I need to make the terrain model the target and carve out a space by selecting the, um, uh, the slab here and making it the operator and in this case doing a subtraction. So we're reversing the roles and changing from intersection to subtraction and then executing and you can see that it makes a beautiful result here. Now this will work even um, or the relationship is live so if I were to drag this into a new position you know perhaps like this you see how the path just repositioned itself. I'll undo that, put it back. Let me go back to the floor plan and say, what if we wanted to um, change it here? It would do the same thing. I can go in perhaps and reposition, you know, this point and uh, let's make a big area for paving um, or for another use. And you'll see that when I go back to 3D, that this is actually color coded or change the appearance of that entire surface. So you can use this for parking areas or planting or anything else where you simply want to delineate a different usage for a terrain mesh. So this has been Eric Fabro talking about terrain modeling and using solid element operations and earlier complex profiles to simplify and speed up your work. Thanks for watching.